Thursday in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and we're talking about uh, marriage relationships and family between now and our Valentine's Day. And uh, I can tell you for certain, both experientially and also from all of the classes that I've taken, that there are five areas of conflict that affect every family. Five areas of conflict that affect every family. If they haven't affected yours yet, they will. And they're guaranteed. The first one is relationships. Relationships with relatives. Now, it'll be other people as well, but it usually comes most severely in the area of your own relations, your own family members, and your husband's family members, or your wife's family members. Second area is communications. Lack of improper attitudes, communications, or this is the second area. Third area is finances. Doesn't always have to be the lack of finances, although that's the most common one. Uh, sometimes it can be just who manages them, whose money is it, those kind of things. And we'll be talking about each of these in detail. The fourth one is emotional physical. There will be a time in your life, in the life of your spouse or your children, where they'll either be under a tremendous emotional strain or they'll be under physical strain from illness or uh, various uh, problems that come up with the physical body. And finally, number five is spiritual. Uh, very often, those first four become much more acute in our problem because of the spiritual condition of the family or the individuals of the family. Now, God knows and he cares. And when he gave us a book, he gave us a book that has much information about how to handle these problems, how to handle relatives, how to handle communications, how to handle finances, how to handle emotional and physical stress, how to handle spiritual problems. Now, when we look at the book, there are tidbits all through the entire Bible about the family, about the areas of conflict, about how to handle those areas of conflict. Some are expressly uh, applicable to the family. Some are implied through other situations. Nevertheless, one of the great books to take a look at for family relationships and guidance in all of these five areas is the book of Proverbs. Where did get, we get the book of Proverbs? Well, we got it from Solomon. He wrote many, but he also collected many wise statements uh, that he thought were profound and were worthy of binding into the book of Proverbs. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 6 through 9, Solomon, a young man, getting ready to take over a joint kingdom, one of the largest kingdoms that Israel had ever known, prayed to God and he said, I need an understanding heart to judge this people of yours. That was a wise prayer. And Solomon, having been given that wisdom, accumulated these sayings that we find in the book of Proverbs. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 27, we find two women of ill repute arguing over a child. One has died and the other one is still living. And of course, they both claim the living child. Solomon, with his wisdom about how to deal with family relationships and with these kinds of situations, says, I know what we'll do. We'll cut the child in half and give you each half. The woman who said, absolutely not, don't do that. The one that said that he knew was the real mother because she loved the child and she would rather see the other woman have the child than to see the child die. That's wisdom. And, and so we see in the book of Proverbs the wisdom of Solomon, not only his own as he wrote, but also the wisdom uh, that he accumulated to put into the book of Proverbs. Now James 1.5 tells us that if we lack wisdom, we should ask of God. Who will supply that wisdom for us? Let's take the first proverb today. Proverbs 1.5. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. And a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. Did you hear what it says? A wise person will listen. 
He will increase in his learning and he will acquire wise counsel. Now, what does that mean? Well, listen to sermons, read books. We go to retreats. We seek out Christian counselors. We talk to our parents if they've been successful in their relationships. We talk to other older and wiser people who have been successful in relationships. And we study the scriptures to find the counsel that we need for every situation that we know we'll come across. Jacob had problems with his father-in-law. Eli had trouble with his sons. Joseph had problems with his brothers. You see, there's all kinds of stories in the scriptures that deal with relatives and problems with relatives. So sometimes the word is very expressly written for us in, say, the book of Proverbs, in the book of Ephesians that we looked at the other day. But many times it's hidden away in the stories of the scriptures and the characters of the scriptures. Proverbs 12, 20 says, Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. You see, someone that wants to counsel is one that wants to bring about peace and joy. And a good Christian counselor can go a long way. This weekend, Temple Baptist Church will have a parenting conference. My guess is that there'll just be a handful of couples there. Because most of us don't think we need the help. But we all do. Because these problems will come. And it tells us very clearly that we need to be one who seeks out counsel from good Christian counseling and then we'll have the peace and the joy that we need. So remember once more before we close out for today and we look at the second of these problems that will come into every family. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him. Having problems in your family, problems with relationships, with relatives, well, there's a very good formula. Number one, pray. Number two, empathize. Try to put yourself in those others' positions so that you can better understand why there's a problem. Three, forgive and get perspective. Is this really worth fighting about? Is this worth holding bitterness and grudges about? Four, Strive for peace. Four simple things that we can all do. Pray, empathize, forgive, get perspective, and strive for peace. That's your thought for the day on relatives and having peace in the home, a problem area that everyone's going to experience. Look to the scriptures for wonderful, wise answers. That's your thought for the day. God bless you.